Coming up on Michigan Replay, the Wolverines go 2-0 on the young season with a win over Central Michigan. We'll have the highlights. We'll also profile an interesting young man who's weathered a number of storms on his way to a starting spot in the offensive line. And we'll look ahead to an early season showdown. We'll scout the Irish of Notre Dame. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Absopure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. By Sirius Satellite Radio. By the University of Michigan Alumni Association, uniting the leaders and best. www.umalumni.com. By State Farm, providing insurance and financial services. And by Pontiac, official performance machines of Michigan and the NCAA. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Well, the Wolverines are 2-0 on the young season, a 41-17 win over Central Michigan. And Coach Carr, you always say the most improvement from a football team is week one to week two. Did you see it against Central Michigan? Well, I saw it in a few things, but uh, there's still some things to work on, Jim. I thought you, you talked last week about the pass protection's got to be better. Now, and Central's got a good front seven. They really do. And I thought pass pro was improved well I think um, with the exception of one new <laughs> of pass rush done and as an old offensive lineman you know you get well, something different when you, every you, week you told Central me, had a very good scheme yeah well you told me after the game they ran a grand twist a grand that's twist. that's where they run that defensive end all the all way around, around the other tackle and that's tough to pick up with that that end design he's Bez a good player design is an outstanding football player I think uh, he's got a great future in the game and, and Central uh, played very very hard very physical game the one thing you did, though, and I thought was important in this game, was you came out, got the ball, and you took control immediately in that opening drive. Well, you know, that's what you always want to do, whether you're at home or on the road, and, and uh, we've done a good job of that thus far. Uh, here, uh, Chad hits uh, Mario, and Mario had a good day today. And if they're laying off the corners, you gotta, you, you got to give that ball out there, don't you? Well, I think uh, it, it takes a quarterback that recognizes the coverage. Here, Adrian Arrington gets an excellent block. I thought our wide receivers uh, did, did some great blocking uh, today. And you're gambling here on fourth down. Well, yeah. You're just a record. riverboat gambler, <laughs> man. Well, you know, we were into the win, and uh, it would have been a very difficult uh, field goal attempt, but uh, Chad found Tyler, and here, the backside, the right side of our line did a great job uh, sealing the backside. Mike made a great cut, and uh, uh, we take the lead. And the defense kept their play from a week ago. Well, here's the only play, the biggest play of the day that hurt us. It's a draw play. Uh, uh, with quarterback sprinting to his left, and our, the back side of our defense got to be a little bit more patient. But they kept making big plays. Uh, here, Lamar Woodley uh, uh, makes a great hit on their quarterback. David Harris there making a heads-up play, and uh, Sean picks it up. But th th this play uh, shows Lamar Woodley got up off the ground after knocking the quarterback down and recovered the ball. Then you had to leave for an hour because of lightning in the area. Jim, I was having some hot dogs in there at the hand. I don't know about you. <laughs> that wasn't even half time, the middle of the first that, quarter. That was a long delay, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the first half. But meanwhile, you come back, and then on your next possession, after the rain delay, you pound it right in. You put a great drive to the, together. And Kevin Grady ran extremely hard, and uh, Mike on the draw play with the good block from uh, Obi Alivo got in for the touchdown. Here's the defense creating a turnover again. Allen Branch causes the fumble. Woodley gets on it. Well, Allen is uh, uh, off, a very, very athletic guy, and that's the second fumble he's calling two weeks from behind. And again, if the corners are going to lay off, you just got to get it to the Manninghams and Preston. Uh, well, Central Michigan is much like Vanderbilt the standpoint. They were they're going to prevent big plays, and that means you have to execute by throwing the ball underneath. Here's a, here again, Kevin, uh, I think, is really starting to feel more comfortable in this offense. And he's a powerful guy. And this is uh, showing him how comfortable he is. Well, nice read, yep. downhill, body lean, the whole thing. Well, the left side of the line, and uh, Mike Massey is a uh, guy that gets better every day and had a good block. At 21 to nothing at this time, and then they get one big pass play on Well, here the quarterback rolls outside the hash marks and throws back, and our safety 
uh, took a bad angle and, and let the receiver back behind him in the deep third. So that's something we got to work on. That's uh, a second big play in two weeks. 21 7 at this point. Mike Hart up the middle again for a good 10 yard run. And then you move Mike Massey out of the pocket off a run action. Well, this is the type of thing. Yeah, the, the uh, Chad finds uh, he hit some uh, passes today off play action. He hit uh, Steve Breston in there, Mike Massey. And Mike is, uh, again, a good pass receiver here. Uh, he hits uh, Steve Breston on a well thrown ball. And uh, when you get all those linebackers up in there to defend the run, it opens some things up in the passing game. How about that hit? Your freshman back, Brandon Miner, still holds on to the ball. I thought that was big. Well, you know, he learned from that play because later in the game, you'll see that he, he gets his pads down a little bit lower. But uh, we stalled there, and uh, Garrett Rivas uh, had an excellent day, got the ball up, and uh, made a couple of good field goals. 24 and 7 at that point on a fourth and two just before half they get out there on a quarterback draw well the, we were blitzing there and we ran right by the quarterback that's a play that uh, you've got to have patience on and uh, that uh, gave Central Michigan some momentum Jim going into the half 24 10 and a half now had you ever been through a lightning delay like you were in that first half where you had to sit for an hour well you know I told our players at the half that are at that uh, intermission uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of distractions, and if you're a focused football team, uh, because the truth was when we got in there, we didn't know how long. We thought at first it would only be 15, 20 minutes, and then it extended much longer than that. So I th I really liked the way that uh, we came out after the rain delay. And uh, you responded by scoring, so the Wolverines did a nice job. We'll talk a little bit later about that lightning when we return, but first, we hear from Steve Breston, who said the CMU game was about getting back to basics. I was just working on uh, executing our plays. I mean, we, we knew that uh, last week it was a couple of physical mistakes, and we was able to come out here and, uh, you know, catch the ball and run good routes, and Chad was putting it on us, and we just, we just made it happen. It, it complimented, the run, complimented the run real good. the locker room. We knew that coming in that they were going to be a lot better, uh, you know, than the previous team we played. They uh, brought different fronts, different stunts, and, um, you know, they had a, a solid front line, so we knew that we had to pick that up. Coming out of the second half of the game on Saturday, Michigan had a 24-10 lead over Central Michigan, but it was almost like your second halftime. <laughs> did, did you find that weird that you were saying the same things? Basically, a half hour later. I never repeat myself, Jim, but you know that. No, and I've, uh, wait a minute now. We've done this show a while. <laughs> You've done enough repeating that I can almost do a show by memory. Yeah, well, I can promise you the players are tired of listening to me. <laughs> so they were uh, excited to get back out there. Did, did, did you break out into individual units at the halftime and just kind of re- uh, confirm what you wanted to do from your first half? Well, we did. I can tell you this. I, I talked to Mike uh, DeBoard on the phone because our coaches couldn't come down from the press box, although Steve Zabel finally did come down to talk to our players. But, um, you know, it was a different Did you get deal. him on the cell phone? Yeah. Yes, I did. It's hey, amazing but one of the problems huh? at first, I, no, I got him on a university okay. you know, phone, but all the cell phones, somebody was telling me that uh, when the rain delay came, that uh, 50,000 fans were got they got on their cell phones. Oh yeah. So you, the service oh, was yeah. uh, blocked. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Oh. Let's go to see the second half highlights. The Wolverines of course leading 24-10. The one bugaboo you talked about after the game was your kick coverage. You just didn't like it. No, I didn't. And we, they they brought they took the ball from the short side of the field, brought it back to the wide side, and uh, we overcommitted into the sideline. Uh, we got it straightened around in the, in the latter part of the second half, but uh, we've got some real work to do in our kickoff team. There's Lamar Woodley again chasing down their quarterback on a fourth down play. He gets the big turnover, and then you take it from there, and this is an impressive drive here. Well, we get Mario out there. Or that's, uh, excuse me, Adrian Arrington, an excellent block, and Steve uh, beats uh, his man and uh, comes up with an excellent game. Mike Hart continues to run strong. Well, there's some good blocking. Uh, uh, Reuben Riley and uh, Alex Mitchell are tight ends. 
Uh, we ran for 250 yards, Jim, which uh, gave us an excellent uh, time of possession. And here Obi Alibo cuts the corner, the guy responsible for the force, and Mike uh, has an easy touchdown. That makes it 31 to 10, and uh, there's just five minutes gone in the third quarter. Well, uh, here we, uh, Rondell Biggs, who uh, got off to such a good start a week ago, uh, came up with another sack. And here, here's that play you were talking about earlier. Brandon Miner in the ball game, your young freshman, and he learned from that hit in the first half. Jim, he did, and there you can see from the time of contact, he gained another three yards. Uh, here he is getting out on the uh, uh, perimeter, and again, got his pads down, comes out, and that's what you want a young back to do. And, uh, so he had some very good repetitions. Drive stalls with Garrett Rivas, who had a very good day on Saturday, knocks through this 40-yarder, and it's a 34-10 lead. Well, at this point, uh, we have control of the football, and uh, Zoltan Mesko, you, I told you one of these you days. You unleashed him. Well, he hit this uh, with a great punt, great effort down there uh, by Brandon Harrison. Well, you talk about Hood. You want to talk about turning field position around. That's a 54-yard punt with a minus one return. Well, that's that's the thing he can do so well. He gets such great height on his kicks. And here is one of the highlights of the day. Max Pollock, uh, a senior linebacker, uh, comes up with a big interception. Uh, he didn't secure the football, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And his teammates won't let him forget that. That ball security thing here, make sure he gets that figured out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Coming out of this game now, how do you feel this team improved? You, you said after the game, we're a better team Saturday than we were the previous week. Well, Jim, I think uh, offensively we have uh, gained some great experience uh, with our new, uh, some of the new things we're doing offensively. Uh, and I think we have established some confidence that we can run the football. I think uh, defensively we've done a good job against the running game. But I think we all understand uh, we're about to head into the real heavy part of our schedule. We've got some games coming up that, uh, you know, are going to be great tests for us. Passing game. Real quick comment, not where you want it to be. No, I don't think it is because I think uh, we, we gave up another sack today, but uh, I thought Chad Henney threw uh, some excellent throws and, uh, you know, they're a, they're a bend but don't break team. So we have yet to be able to get the ball down the field and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to do that here shortly. All right, when we come back, we'll meet Adam Krauss. But before we do that, we're here from Max Pollock about his interception return for TD. He says... He's still kind of like in the twilight zone. You know what? If I could tell you what I remember, I really don't remember too much about it. It's kind of a blur. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to piece the parts together tomorrow when I watch the film, but I don't know. It just was in my hands, and I ran, and that's, I mean, I don't remember much about it. It feels great. Field anywhere that... Uh, I can help the team win is uh, where I want to be. So if that means right tackle or left tackle or center or guards, I mean, I'll play anywhere. During his journey, he's had to overcome injury and natural disasters. You see, Adam is from New Orleans, and just a year ago, he had to watch from afar as his family was displaced from their home by Hurricane Katrina. There's definitely lingering effects. Um, you know, New Orleans is not close to being back to what it to what it once was and uh, I mean our house we haven't moved back in our house yet so we're still rebuilding there so there's still a lot that needs you know that needs to be done I mean as far as the economy and everything there's a I mean it's not close to what it was so it's gonna it's gonna be like that for a while too it's not anything that's just gonna happen overnight and be done with in a year so Adam is also a young man of faith and last spring he made a trip he always wanted to make he traveled to Israel the home of his faith the trip was well before the recent violence there, but nonetheless, the experience was profound. Well, I expected not to feel so safe. Uh, expected it to be a little scary, but uh, I got there and uh, I felt as safe as I do here. And uh, just seeing all this historical sites and, I mean, all this history was, was an amazing thing. Now in his senior season as a Wolverine, his focus is on football. And as an offensive lineman, he is determined to make the running game better. We're aggravated. I mean, we uh, we want to get out there and we want to 
we want to be able to run the ball, you know. Uh, hopefully this year that we'll be able to go out there and do that. That's, that's our main goal, you know. I just, I just want to run the ball and, uh, you know, house some of the critics. Well, clearly the Wolverines and Adam Krause have hushed some of the critics with the running game, but I think sometimes what we forget is that these young men have other parts of their lives. Like when you look at what he's had to go through with his family in Hurricane Katrina, those are things that, you know, sometimes get glossed over. And this young man's had to come through all of that and still keep his focus on school and football. Well, one of the real joys, I think the greatest joys in coaching is the, uh, the, the kids that uh, you get to know and the families and certainly his family. Uh, they, they, what they've been through, and uh, his father's fighting uh, a battle with cancer, and his sister uh, was in school here first semester a year ago. She's a student at Tulane, but um, it, it's uh, you, you get a some small feeling about how devastating Katrina was when you know what the Krause family went through. Well, it's good to see them grow up, and, and we've always said at Michigan Replay, it's fun to see these kids from freshmen to seniors. Well, Adam Krause in his opening statement there talked about uh, whatever he could do for the team, and he is a, an ultimate team guy. All right, when we come back, we will look ahead to those Irish from Notre Dame, but first we hear from Chad Henney. He says he remembers Notre Dame's past. It all came down to execution, and we hurt ourselves in the last two years. And uh, hopefully this year we get the game plan in, and uh, we all execute. How Rose Steel take you inside the locker room? It's all business for now on. We can't make any more mistakes. We have to have uh, A-plus effort. We have to be on the top of our game. No missed assignments, no nothing. We have to be perfect to be all these rest, the rest of our schedule because the rest of our schedule is tough. Well, earlier in the show, you heard Coach Carr say you're entering the meat of your schedule. I would say the filet mignon is coming up this weekend with the Irish. Well, they've certainly been uh, an impressive football team. Uh, in the opener, I thought they did a great job in Atlanta in a tough uh, environment, an you know, opening game, and of course, uh, they uh, they had a great day against Penn State. And and the thing about Notre Dame is is that you know with a confident team of Charlie Weiss and a great young quarterback, not young anymore, but this guy seems like he's been there for 100 years, but he's Brady Quinn's all that's advertised. Well, he played against us as a true freshman and certainly uh, developed. Uh, Charlie's done a great job with him and. Uh, he's got a great cast around him, uh, great receivers. Uh, Darius Walker, I think, is one of the finest football players in this country. A guy that's a great pass protector, great running back, and a great receiver. And Samarja is a huge asset. Well, he's an All-American. He's a guy that uh, runs great routes. He's a great deep threat and a target that can go up and... Uh, make a play even when he's covered. And defensively, they're still strong. They've got a lot of guys that can get after you. Victor Abiyamiri, Maurice Crum, and of course their safety, Mr. Everything, the boxer, Tom Zibikowski. Well, I'm very impressed. Uh, they've moved Crum into the middle of the defense, one of the finest, fastest linebackers, I think, in the nation. Of course, Zibikowski, uh, Jim, is an outstanding punt returner as well as being a hard-hitting uh, safety, a guy that uh, like he likes to mix it up. The one thing about Notre Dame, and we talked about it uh, as the Notre Dame Penn State game was going on, you said their time of possession, the first half against Penn State, was way out of whack for them, and, and you can't allow that. Well, if you're going to give Penn, uh, if you're going to give Notre Dame the ball 18 minutes out of 30 in the first half, uh, your defense is going to be worn out. I mean, we've got to be able to do some things offensively and uh, put some points on the board. You know Notre Dame is going to score some points, and uh, but we cannot, uh, we've got to do some things offensively. And I think, you know, Notre Dame gets this reputation with Charlie Weiss, the offensive genius, quote unquote, and yet I think the strength of their team, what holds them in games is, is their defense. I think their defense maybe gets a short shrift. Well, I think, you know, we all know they've got outstanding athletes, and they're very quick. I think uh, they're, they're much quicker than they were a year ago defensively. Uh, but offensively, they've got so many weapons. And, of course, Quinn uh, is a guy that uh, uh, can make all the throws. And 
uh, Jim, they have a great screen game. Uh, and, and of course, Darius Walker is a great football player. So, and their offensive line is veteran with one exception, uh, Sam Young, a young tackle, freshman tackle starting in there. But uh, it's a veteran team. As you go into this game, what's your focus for Michigan? Well, our focus is to, to be uh, balanced offensively. I think uh, they're going to make it hard to run the football because that's what we've done best uh, so far. But we're going to have to be able to protect and throw the football. And uh, we've got to uh, keep from giving up any big plays. Uh, you can't give them easy touchdowns. They're going to earn enough as it is. And don't you dare turn it over. Don't turn the football over. There you go. It's Michigan-Notre Dame. It's next week. Be here for it all right here on Michigan Replay.